Shalom. This week's Sedra is Sedra's Kitetze. Shirley opened up her Chumash and read from this week's Sedra. If a man commits a sin for which he is sentenced to death, and he is put to death, you shall then hang him on a pole. But you shall not leave his body on the pole overnight. Rather, you shall bury him on that same day. For a hanging corpse is a degradation of God, and you shall not defile your land, which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. As she leaned back on her porch, taking in the quiet peace of Mitzbe Richo, Shirley began reading Rashi's comments on these verses. Wherever degradation of God appears in Scripture, Rashi explained, it means tre treating lightly and degrading. Hanging someone for an extended length of time is a degradation of the divine king in whose image man is created, and the Israelites are God's children. This is comparable, Rashi explained, to two identical twin brothers. One of them became king while the other one was arrested for robbery and hanged. Whoever saw the second brother suspended on the gallows would say, the king is hanging. Therefore, the king ordered him removed. Rashi's son-in-law, the Rashbam, explained the verse differently. The Rashbam wrote that when people viewed the corpse of, the, of a person who had been hanged, they are in the habit of cursing the judge who decreed the penalty, or the relatives of the, of the victim cursed the judges, accusing them of handing down a harsh verdict for a relatively minor offense. While Rashi understood the degradation of God to refer to man's conception of God, the Rashbam understood it to refer to man's perception of judges. The word of the verse that translated above as God is Elohim, which can refer to a judge. The same word is used for both God and a judge in the Torah. For when a judge proclaims sentence on a plaintiff or defendant, he is somewhat playing the role of God, the ultimate judge. In the Rashbam's approach to this verse, a great lesson about taking responsibility is taught. All too often, responsibility is shirked and blame placed elsewhere. The theme of the Torah is taking responsibility. The first step of repentance, arguably the greatest tool a Jew has in his relationship with God, is taking responsibility. Unless someone is willing to take responsibility, they have minimal chance of growth. The Torah alludes to this true idea by commanding us to try to ensure that allowing others to shift blame doesn't occur by not having a guilty party hanged for too long, lest others use the body as an opportunity to malign the judge as being too harsh. Shirley heard this message loud and clear and committed to taking more responsibility in her own life. It's a lesson that we can all take to heart. Shabbat Shalom.